So last video on triads for the week. Okay, so triads so far have looked like a snowman, just like this, um, where root is on the bottom, then third, then fifth. And as you probably have already guessed, they don't always stay that way. Um, so as we do chord analysis in the future, you always wanna know what the root is because that tells you what chord it is, but the root doesn't always have to be on the bottom. So uh, this is root position because root is on the bottom. First inversion, means that you've taken the bottom note, the root, and you've moved it up an octave. So you're gonna keep the third and fifth exactly where they were. There's your third, there's your fifth, but you're gonna move this bottom note, which in our case happens to be an F, an octave up. And there it is. So you're taking this note and moving it up here. Okay, so that's first inversion. And when you see a chord with that shape that has a third on the bottom and then a leap to the top, you know you're in first inversion. So without getting into too much detail, um, there's something called figured bass um, that with more time I would love to do with you. Um, it's, it's kind of a, a Baroque era way of, uh, of writing music and chords. Um, but the thing that we've stuck with from that era, from those figured bass uh, patterns is this. When you see a chord like this in first inversion, you're going to see a tiny little six next to it. Okay, so just take my word for that for now. We can always get into the whys of it later. Now there's a first inversion, there's also a second inversion because we have three different notes, we actually have three different combinations for how they can be stacked. So from here, we're gonna keep the fifth and the root in the same position and we're gonna pop that third up an octave. So here's our fifth from before, there's our root, and we're gonna pop that one right here, our third up an octave like that. Okay, so when you see uh, the, the gap, the fourth on the bottom with the third on the top, you are in second inversion and that symbol from that figured bass thing that we talked about earlier, the hangover from that in modern music is this symbol, a 6-4, okay? So if you see no numbers next to it, you know you're in root position. If you see a six, you know you're in first inversion. A 6-4 means second inversion. So now we're gonna identify a couple of triads that are in inversions and build triads in inversions. And, uh, and you'll really have a nice full toolbox for, uh, for being ready for, uh, for some chord analysis. So first one, we see the gap on the bottom. We see the third on the top. It looks an awful lot like that shape, just on different notes, right? So we know it's a second inversion, which means that your root is going to be where? Your root is gonna be right here <laughs> in the middle. Remember how the F moved, uh, moved up here and ended up in the middle on the second inversion? If you're in second inversion, the middle note is your root. That's one way of looking at it. The other way you can do it is with your uh, chord chart, right? We can go through and we can do the letter names. We have B, E, G, and we know from the key signature, these are actually B flat, E flat, and G. Okay, if you're looking for E, G, B, any combination of those, um, well, there's an E, but I don't have a G or a B. Um, here's an E, but I, and I have a G, but no B, so it's not that chord. Um, let's see here, aha, here's an E and a G and a B, ha! So this is what the chord might actually be. It has those three letters in it. This is where this comes in really handy, especially the seventh chords. So in our case though, we have an E flat and a B flat. So there they are, but it is that chord. Okay, so we know our root is in the middle. It's an E flat chord of some kind. Now, some people find it helpful to convert it back to a root position triad in order to figure out uh, what, what quality of triad it is. You can do this. You can take that B flat and put it back over here, turn it back into its snowman form, and go from there. There's your root position triad starting on E flat. We've got a major third on the bottom, minor third on the top, which means this, this black chord right here, is actually an E flat major chord, and it's in what position? Second inversion. So there's your chord, okay? 
okay? So if you're looking at, I know that got a lot of, uh, a lot of writing on it, this is the actual label of that chord, E flat major chord in second inversion, 6-4. Okay, and like I mentioned last time, that E flat major very soon will be replaced with a Roman numeral, which will make it less writing, which I think is actually easier. But for now, for this week, you're just identifying what kind of chords you see. Let's see if you can do the next one on your own. So again, we have something that looks like it's in second inversion, yeah? We've got the gap on the bottom, we've got the, th uh, the third on the top, which means our root is in the middle, if you wanna think about it that way. Okay, now I'm not gonna actually turn this back into a triad uh, this time, this time. I am gonna put uh, the letter names in though. We have F, B, and D. We know it's some kind of B chord. B is your root, so let's put that B down there. Now, if you're just imagining, you can write it in or you can just imagine it up on top, this F up on top. We've got B to D is a minor third. And then if we had the F on top, D to F would be another minor third, which means we're looking at a diminished chord. This is B diminished. Now let's see if you can build the triad. Build the triad. Okay, so this gets to be a little bit trickier, um, but not much. I mean, you have all the, the, the building blocks to be able to do this. So remember that the name is always the root of your chord. So let's throw an E flat on there. This is still treble clef. Right? Yeah, I'm still in trouble, Cliff. Okay, so we'll throw an E flat here. We don't have to add the flat next to it because it's in the key signature. Okay, and we want it in 6-4. So the root is not actually at the bottom. I probably should have done that first. Sorry about that. Let's rewind. Let's use a different one. The root is not going to be on the bottom, so let's use another E. Let's use E flat up here. Okay. So in 6-4, the root is on the bottom in root position, the third is on the bottom in, in 6 in first inversion, and the fifth is on the bottom in second inversion. So let's go use this little baby right here. We know that E is going to be in there and it's the root. You should have an E, a G, and a B. And because this is in a second inversion, that B is going to be on the bottom. So let's put that there then E, and then the one that we're missing, if you want to look through up here, is G. Okay, so now we have all the right note heads in there and the right lines and spaces, if you ignore this little baby down here. Okay, we know that we want it to be an E flat minor chord. Okay, so we've got our E flat here, that's good. We've got our B flat, and we've got our G. Okay, now starting on the root. Root to the next note up, what kind of third do we have? We have a major third. If I were to put this imaginary B up here, G to a B flat would be a minor third. What kind of chord do we have? We've got an E flat major chord. So this is the part that we're missing, major chord. In order for this to be correct, we need the E flat to this next note up to be a minor third, not a major third needs to be a G flat for all of that to work. So this needs that, and you're good to go. Let's see if you can do the next one on your own. All right, so we've got a C6 chord. If there's no designation for major or minor, it's major, okay? So this is a C major in first inversion. Okay, so let's go back over here. We have a C, an E, and a G for any kind of C chord. There it is, so that's what we're gonna need. In first inversion, the third is gonna be on the top. I'm sorry, the third is going to be on the bottom in first inversion. So our order will be E, G, C. Okay, and we want a, a major chord. Okay, so think in terms of if we popped this C back down here, the C to an E would be a major third, E to a G would be a minor third. Major third with a minor third stacked on top of it, that's a major triad. C major in first inversion, we're good. Last one.
I think looking back on this, I probably would have maybe used this a little bit differently for the building the triad part. Um, it might be helpful for you to write in down here, I think you can see that, yeah, to write in down here um, that, uh, that this note or this column of letters would be on the bottom in first inversion, and this column of letters would be on the bottom in second inversion. So if that's helpful to you, uh, then use that. Okay, so we want an F sharp chord of some kind. Let's go to F, there it is, F, A, C. Don't worry about the sharp for now. And we want it in six, four, which means we want it in second version. So the C is going to be on the bottom. Are we still in trouble, Clef? Yeah, I keep double checking myself. C is going to be on the bottom. So let's put the C here. There it is. Now we'll head back to F and A. Okay, so we know we've got the note heads in the right place. We also know that we need the F to be a sharp. So we'll add that. Now we go through and analyze this. We've got this part and we've got this part. We just have a question about that part right there. Okay, so let's imagine putting this back into root position. If you put C up here, I'm gonna start on the bottom. F sharp to A would be A minor third. And what we really need is for A to C to be a minor third as well for this to be diminished. Is it a regular old C? Yes, it is. So it is actually a diminished chord exactly as written, just like that. Okay, so I'm gonna acknowledge that this part, the building part, is probably the trickiest part because there's a little trial and error. Whenever you think you're finished building some sort of triad in an inversion or not in an inversion, um, go back and check. Maybe pull it back into root position on the side. This is why I said you'll be using a lot of paper because um, it's, it's good to use extra space so that you can chicken scratch everywhere, like I mentioned, right? Actually throw it back into root, root position to check the thirds to see the quality of the triad um, and then put it in the inversion and check to make sure that it still works. So, uh, but if this is still a little bit confusing for you, that's okay. Um, it's the lesser used of what we're gonna be doing in the next six weeks. We'll more often have to look at a triad and be able to tell what it is, then we will be given an opportunity to build one. Um, we will do it, but just not in the same way as right here. So try not to stress too much about it, but do keep holding on to this. It will become very, very useful when we talk about seventh chords next week. And if you already know how to write those in, you probably can, can do that if you're a smarty pants and I've got a couple of you that do that. So anyway, onward.